Hey everyone, it's Cradiac. Thanks for stopping by the channel. This is going to be the uh, first video on my new channel, Cradiac Games. So, welcome to everybody. I appreciate everyone coming by. Uh, today, I'm doing a deck profile of one that I built recently and having a lot of fun with it. It's the uh, Rayquaza Ladies deck. Basically, uses the Morgan support, uh, supporter cards out of Team Up to attach a bunch of energy onto Rayquaza. So, anyways, I'll go ahead and jump into it. Um, I'm just going to kind of explain as I go along, and then afterwards, um, I'll kind of show the deck list and show what we're working with and stuff. So, let me go ahead and move on over here into Versus, and I'll do a couple games. Um, I've not really been getting a whole lot of meta decks like the uh, uh, the Team Up decks, the Gengar, Mimikyu, the, um, the Pika Rom, Zapdos, Ultra Necrozma. I haven't been getting a whole lot of those lately. I'm not really sure how the algorithm works with how they determine who you get matched up against, but it does seem, I think, based on um, the deck that you're playing and what your kind of win percentage is. So since it's a new deck, that might be why I'm not seeing a whole lot of other ones, but it's a really fun deck to play. It's very consistent. Being able to get Morgan on your second turn um, happens pretty frequently. Uh, let's see, for your treat, so I'll stick you up. So ideally what you want is you want to get a Rayquaza on the bench on turn one, and you want to get a Tapu Lele so you can get a Steven's Resolve, and then ideally you want one other of the, the four ladies. So there's four. There's Nita, Morgan, Evelyn, and uh, one other one that I can't remember the name of. So ideally you want to get at least one of those other ones, get Steven's Resolve so you can get the other three, and then turn two you're doing Morgan. If they have a... Um, let's go ahead and get us. So let's go ahead and get the Stevens Resolve. Um, so if they can get a um, Mars Shadow and use Let Loose, or if they play Judge, those are basically the two ways that this can get messed up. So um, Dana, that was the other one. So you want to use them. If you have all those in your hand and you use Morgan, it allows you to search the top 12 cards of your deck for any uh, energy and attach them to your Pokemon in any way you like. So obviously if you use that with Rayquaza's Dragon Break or Shaman's Flower Storm, you can do massive damage right away. So it's really cool. Um, we'll go ahead and throw him down there. And let's go ahead and do Mysterious Treasure. The normal deck list runs um, four copies of Tapu Lele. I have three just because I, I didn't have enough packs to get the other one. So that's what I'm running is three. And having two Rayquaza is really good as well on the bench. That way, um, whenever you, you know, if you happen to get one knocked out, you've already got another one lined up and ready to go. So uh, let's see, we'll go ahead and get Tapu Lele out and get one of the other supporters that we need. Any one doesn't matter, so we'll get Dana. Now a lot of decks I've been seeing, a lot of them scoop right away. As soon as they start seeing you set up, especially once you use Morgan, they just go ahead and scoop because they know that, you know, it's they, they don't have a very good chance of winning. So we're going to go ahead and use the ability here. So three cards go in the discard pile. That's good. That gives us a lightning energy. And we can go ahead and use Tapu Koko right away and attach another lightning energy. So the only thing here that would make this hand complete is a Zorora so that we can, Azura GX, so that we can um, easily retreat out um, whoever's in the active, but since we've got Shaman, we don't need that, so that's pretty nice. But if you get anybody else up here, either having, uh, having Azura is the, is the best thing to do, that way um, you don't have to worry about uh, getting stuck with Rayquaza on your bench. So let's go ahead and get Evelyn. Morgan and Nita. Okay, so as long as they don't use a Let Loose Mar Shadow or a Judge, which not a whole lot of decks seem to be running Judge, um, but there are some, but quite a few decks are putting Mar Shadow in, in there. So Mar Shadow, obviously a lot easier to get than a Judge. You can get a Mar Shadow with an Ultra Ball or with a, um, with a Mysterious Treasure or something like that. So pretty easy to get Mar Shadow on the bench. Um, so I've seen a lot of decks that are playing that. And you don't have to worry about wasting your supporter for the turn. So it's a really good card. I think a lot of people are starting to catch on and use that. Um, but they've got Lily. 
and looks like they did not get the cards that they needed, which is awesome for us. So let's see, do I have, all right, I don't have enough to use. I would like to Ultra Ball for another Rayquaza, but I don't have a second card. Actually, you know what? I will be able to, but not before using uh, Morgan. So I can use Rangaroo to get another card um, to use my Ultra Ball for, but it'll have to be after I put all these energy on, which kind of stinks. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put two grass on my Shaman so that my Shaman is, and actually I'll just leave my Shaman in the active because it would be nice to uh, not have to worry about uh, losing two prize cards. So Shaman's really nice for that. All right, and then we'll go ahead and load up one of these Tapu Lele, kind of make a super Lele. So the two strategies, you can spread them out evenly across all your Pokemon here, or you can just put them on one of your Tapu Leles and try to get the Tapu Lele so that it can knock out you know, one of their basic cards. So we'll go ahead and get one more Rayquaza. And the only thing that may run into is if they, you know, like put my Oranguru in the active or something and I can't retreat him. But having, I could put Zorora out, but I'm actually gonna elect for another Rayquaza just so I can get up That'll give me three, four if you include Tapu Lele attackers. And again, this is turn two. So it's it's pretty it's pretty awesome. And this deck, very, very consistently. Like I said, the normal variant of this um, uses four Tapu Leles. You've got Ultra Balls, you've got Mysterious Treasures. So getting a Tapu Lele is not at all hard. Usually you get dealt at least one of the cards that you need, uh, one of the supporters, one of the ladies. So, um, Pretty much the only time that I don't get turn two Morgan is if they use Let Loose or Judge. That's pretty much the only time. So this deck is really, really consistent. Um, so he is going to uh, take a knockout probably on my Shaman. But yeah, as you saw, like turn two to do 270 damage is insane. I mean, that's enough to take out a Celebi and Venusaur GX tag team, which is one of the tankiest of, of decks right now. So um, you could put in like an Absol in this deck. That's something that you could do as a variant. That way you don't have to worry about them using buff padding on the Venusaur because of the retreat cost going up. You could do that. Um, but other than that, I mean, this deck is really good. Um, it does struggle a bit with uh, Lost March, I've found, which Lost March is a deck that isn't isn't the greatest you won't see it in a whole lot of tournaments if you're playing locally and stuff like that um, online it comes up quite a bit because it's a very cheap deck to build um, but it does do pretty well against this because even with you knocking out their Pokemon pretty quickly from turn one it's not difficult for them at all to get um, doing 180 damage is not hard in most decks so getting up to 180 in Lost March really isn't very difficult at all and every time they knock out one of your Pokemon you're losing three plus energy so it uh, it makes things difficult so let's see we've got still enough we got seven so we still have enough to uh, knock out his Zoroark GX he's got one on the bench but we're not too worried about him the nice thing about Zoroark is the most damage that he can do is uh, 100 let's see 120 150, 170 is the most that he can do. And that's only if he happens to, uh, let's see, hey, stage one, we can draw four cards, that works. Um, that's only if he happens to uh, get a Professor Kakui and a Choice Band, so. All right, Jirachi, I don't think we need you right now. I'm actually going to get a Zorora GX on the bench. That'll be good. Give me free retreat on those guys. And Evelyn's actually a pretty decent card for that ability, so that's kind of nice. All right, Dragon Break for Knockout. And that does 240. So even losing Shaman and losing those two energy, we're still doing 240 damage, which is good enough to even get like a Picarom. So, I mean, this deck hits hard. And um, even when you don't get it set up right, like if they use Let Loose and you're not able to get Morgan turn two, just with Rayquaza's ability, and then having that Tapu, uh, where is he? Having that Tapu Coco Prism Star, um, you can still get three energy attaches in one turn. I mean, uh, and if you added energy switches, you could even get possibly more than that. So you can still get to where 
he can attack turn one, or turn two rather, um, or turn one if you go second, and you know still do over 100 damage on your first attack. So very very good deck. So he's gonna try to get Lycanroc out there. That's kind of his ace in the hole to get a quick KO in one of my GXs. And at this point, I'm set up well enough that I'm really not worried about that. Um, I'll put another energy on Rayquaza next turn. And even if this Rayquaza happens to get knocked out soon, you know. And I've got Guzma, so let's go ahead and hook him up. We'll go ahead and take out another Zorark. I'm not too worried about that Rowlet. Even if he takes out one of my Rayquazas, um, not too concerned about that. I could take out the Rowlet, but right now I'm wanting to go ahead and get two prizes. That'll make winning this game really simple. He may just go ahead and scoop this game because, yeah, well played. So he's going to go ahead and, and give it up. Yeah, there's nothing he can do at this point. So, and Zorark is one of the top rated decks right now. I mean, I think it's still coming first place in a lot of, a lot of tournaments and stuff. So, um, it's, uh, yeah, it, it, it makes quick work of this deck. So it's not unbeatable. The way that I found out about this deck actually is interesting. Um, was a, somebody had posted something on Reddit. I can't remember even what the topic of their post was, but in the screenshot that they posted of the TCGO game, it had um, their win streak in the background and it was 40. And I'm like, what deck are you playing that you've got a 40 win streak? I've gotten 20 before. And that was insane, but that's the most I've ever gotten. And uh, I don't even remember what deck I was running at the time. I think I was running Volcanion EX back in the day. So anyways, yeah, he had 40, and he said it was with this deck. I don't know. He didn't put his deck list, so I don't know if he's running this exact version. But, I mean, it's, it's good. And at the end of the day, you know, it still comes out to luck. I mean, you can still um, get poor luck and just not get the energy that you need to get the knockouts and stuff. But as you can see with this one it's uh it's done really well so we'll just throw another energy here and take the knockout gg game over so massively powerful deck i'll go ahead and show you the deck list real quick i'm glad that i got uh, fortunate enough with the matchmaking luck that I, I was able to show you a a meta deck to go up because i've going up against a lot of kind of weird decks that has been matching me up with but hey i got some tickets i got 10 tickets so i can go lose in the first round of a tournament sweet i actually played this uh in a tournament um on on here on the online game and lost first round a lot to, to uh lost march i've lost multiple times to lost march against this deck so it's not this deck is really aimed for your beefy decks, your Pika Roms, uh, Zoroark GX, your Venusaur GX, because it hits so hard, and especially if it's a team-up deck because you get three prizes, and you can get those three prizes on turn two. I mean, like I said, this last game I did 270 damage. It's nuts. So that's really what this deck is aimed for. It's not meant for um, like Zapdos or... Uh, Charizard probably even would, would not have a hard time hitting numbers to take out these guys. So it definitely has its uh, strong points. All right, so here is here is the deck list. Um, again, I swapped out. Uh, I put in one Jirachi for a Tapu Lele because I didn't have four Tapu Leles. But normally there's four Tapu Leles. Uh, two Orangaroos for extra draw support. Honestly, I barely use Orangaroo, so I think that you could probably sub him out with something else. You could use, um, you could put a Marshadow in here of your own just if you wanted to disrupt your opponent's hand, um, or if you happen to be going up against another Rayquaza deck. Um, another thing that wouldn't be a bad idea is putting, like, since you run Lightning Energy, you could put in Jolteon GX. That would be a fantastic choice because if you happen to run against a vile plume that has, I forget the name of the ability, but it locks you down to where if you're a basic Pokemon, you cannot attack. And by default, if you go up against that, you lose the game because this is nothing but basic Pokemon in this deck list. Uh, so you could definitely sub in a Jolteon GX, or if you don't have that, you could do something a little more affordable, uh, w like with a um, Raichu GX. You could do that. So there's definitely some um, changes you can make to this deck. 
and then it runs two copies, I'm sorry, three copies of Dana, three, four copies of Evelyn, and two copies of Morgan, three copies of Nita. That can be tweaked. Um, honestly, Morgan, the, you only need two of those because you don't have, it doesn't have an effect except unless you can discard all the other ladies. Um, as you saw from the last game that it did, which one was it? Was it Evelyn? Yeah, if they have a stage one out, you get to draw four cards. That's pretty cool. This one, uh, you can shuffle, you can search your deck for two cards and put them into your hand if they have a stage two Pokemon. So the other ladies are decent. Um, so, and then nine grass energy, nine lightning energy, um, three copies of Steven's Resolve. So multiple copies of all the trainers just in case some get prized, which does happen. Also, whenever you're using Rayquaza's ability, since you discard the top three cards of your deck, there's always the possibility that you will discard one of these girls. So, but anyways, um, that's pretty much it. So that's Rayquaza ladies, and awesome deck to play. It's not real expensive to build as far as trading goes. Um, Rayquaza goes for only like four or five packs of cards, I think, at the time of making this. Um, if you don't feel like waiting, you can easily get them for like seven packs. Um, but if you're a little more patient, you can get them cheaper than that. The most expensive thing here is Aurora. I think as the at the time of this video posting, he's still going for about 17 packs. Jirachi's going for about 12 packs. Uh, Lele's, they were going for seven or eight packs. So those are the expensive ones, but the actual Rayquazas are pretty cheap. You know, if you're comparing it to like a, um, you know, Pika Rom deck or something like that, those are a bit more expensive. But anyways, overall, awesome deck. Um, that's it for me. Thanks for stopping by the channel. Um, if you are interested in this kind of stuff, I do stream a few times a month, not real, not real, like frequently, but I do stream. Um, usually I stream this, sometimes I stream uh, Pokemon Gold or just like some older games and stuff like that. So if you're interested in that, link in the description for my Twitch channel. Other than that, have a great day guys and I'll talk to you all next time.